Get going. Good morning, church. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. This morning, it is just good to be here today. Yes. Be able to come before you and be able to preach God's word and fellowship and praise God and just thank him for how good he's been. Yes. I want to thank, before I get started, Brother Alex for doing an outstanding job on that Sunday school lesson this morning. Yes. He did an outstanding job. And I want to encourage all that who are not made up in their mind to come to Sunday school. I want to encourage you to come to Sunday school. This is where you'll get a lot of your learning. You'll get a lot of things that we uh, don't have time to discuss sometimes in a, a, a short sermon in the mornings. But I just want to encourage you. We are in the last Sunday, the last Lord's Day of the 23 year. And we just give thanks to God for blessing us to be able to live and come this far. Amen. And that is worth it. That is worth it. That is worth it to be praised. Amen. And I taught a sermon on last Lord's Day Amen. Dealing with praise. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope everybody has had an opportunity to, to listen to that message. We thank God for technology. We thank God for Brother Haynes for uh, recording those messages and then going and, and editing them and putting the uh, text out there for everyone to, to enjoy. But I hope that you are encouraged and enlightened by that sermon. Amen. Because it's all right to praise God. You know, <laughs> before I get started... Satan doesn't mind you being in the church of Christ. No. He doesn't mind you coming to church on Sunday morning. He just doesn't want you to praise God Amen. when you get here. Amen. Amen. And Amen. we have to have enough sense to know the difference. All right. All right. And I was sharing with Brother Brandon back at the back. I said, now think about it like this. He already knows the truth because we've already talked about it before. But I, we were just talking about that sermon. If someone came along a friend or someone, and they did a, a momentous, a tremendous favor for you. So much so that it put them in jeopardy for doing it. Mm -hmm. And and man, it, it really, they have battle scars behind what they did for you. And they did it for you, not because you deserved it, or not because you were even worthy. They did it because they're just a good, good friend. Yes, right. And when they do it, your response to them is, thank you. <laughs> when you kind of wonder about that dude? Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. the natural response, Brother Wayne, is that if somebody came along, you $350,000 in debt and the amount is counted, and this friend comes along, Pay you out that three fifty and give you three fifty to boot. <laughs> now, what is your response to that, man? Thank you, man. Good God Almighty, Lord have mercy. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. See, just nature tells you yeah. how you need to respond to some things. Yes. So Satan doesn't care if you come to church and sit down in the pews and just sit here like a knot on the law. <laughs> long as you don't give praise and thank you to the one that made it all possible. Amen. 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 And I'm going to tell you something. I got sense enough to know the difference and I'm trying to teach everybody else too. Amen. Now, in that, we have a lesson that's laid out for you. Unplug and plug in. Dejanet, how did you come up with something like that? Because, you know, as I'm just paying attention and watching life, the, the way this thing is set up, the world wants you to plug in to what they have going. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. And that if you plug in to what they have going, then you are somebody you fit in and you matter. Mm -hmm. right. But God is steadily telling his people to unplug. Yes, sir. Right. From the world. Mm -hmm. Satan says, I want you to unplug, or rather, I want you to unplug, yes, from God, mm -hmm. and then plug into what I have. Amen. God is saying, no, unplug from what Satan has mm -hmm. and plug in to what I have. Amen. Right. Amen. And church, we're going to deal with that this Amen. morning. Right. Because if, if we don't distinguish this, we're going to be a hamster running on a on a rat race. 
The man who has $100,000 or $50,000, I shared this in the uh, Wednesday night Bible class, Satan will make that man or woman feel inadequate if they, unless they have $100,000 or $150,000. <laughs> Satan will then come along with a man that has a million dollars and makes the man that has $100,000 feel small. Mm -hmm. A man will come along with $10 million and make the man with the million dollars feel small. So now this dude has $10 million, but a man with 100 million came along and told the man with the 10 million, you're a punk if you don't have 100 million. Yeah. And each person, because they are not plugged into God and understand what's happening, they're going to get on that rat race trying to chase what Satan is saying makes them valid or valuable as a human being. Amen. The person that has the hundred million dollars, the dude comes along with the billion, and he tells the dude with the hundred million, you're nothing if you don't have a billion. And then he starts talking foolish and crazy. Boy, I take a million dollars and light my cigar with that. <laughs> so you feeling bad because you just have a hundred million. You don't have sense to appreciate Amen. What you have, yeah. right. because Satan is telling you that you are not anything unless you have what he sets the standard, and it's always That's a moving right. target. Amen. Amen. Right. The dude with the billion, he feels insignificant because a man with 50 billion came along and told him that he's a punk if he don't have the 50 billion. Do you see this? Yeah. yeah. I don't see that. If you don't see it, you're going to always be chasing this world's vanity, you better hear what I'm saying, yes. to fit in. Mm -hmm. The woman on the media is telling the other women that unless you are this height, this shape, this figure, have eyelashes out two inches long, or if you don't have breasts sticking way out here, or a, a rump kick back there, that you are insignificant as a woman. Come on, we. Uh, He's telling the man that unless you have this amount of money, live in this kind of house, drive this kind of car, and, and have this position or status or what, 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 then you ain't no real man. And everybody is chasing, 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 trying to accomplish it. And then if they do accomplish it, they're still not happy. Amen. Because Satan continues to move the target. Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Unplug from that. Coming out of 23, I want you to unplug from that and plug into the Lord. Because let me tell you something. I don't care what you acquire, what you attain to, or what you get. It is still not going to fulfill the void that's in your life. Amen. It is still not going to fulfill the emotional deficits that you have. Amen. It is still not going to fulfill the spiritual deficit that you have. Mm -hmm. One million, ten million, a hundred million, a billion, fifty billion, and a hundred billion is not going to fulfill you as a human being. Amen. And everybody is still running after it. You need Jesus. Amen. 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 If you want to truly be a success, hear me well. Success, you've heard me preach it before, <clears throat> is not the world's standard of money, name, fame, and acclaim. Amen. Success, according to the Bible, is having a peace of mind. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. And having answers and understanding. Amen. Yes, sir. If you have $20,000, but you have peace of mind, and you have an understanding of the way this all stuff is orchestrated, you will have sense enough to go out and sit on your porch, listen to the radio, watch the squirrels play and the birds fly through the air and the bees going through doing what they do. You'll be just as content as you can be. Amen. Amen. But if you have a million dollars, but a screwed up mind, you don't have sense enough to when you wake up in the morning to say, Lord, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Say it again, right? You go outside where it's so clear and pretty, you complaining because it's too hot out here. <laughs> 
You get in your car, you wanted an expensive car, you get in the car, but your nerves are all jacked up. And you can't even enjoy the ride because you're aggravated on people going too slow. They need to hurry up. I need to hurry up and get where I'm going. You got the million dollars, you got the nice car, but your mind all screwed up racing. Oh no, I'm making sure my wife understand this right now. That when you retire and come home, you better slow your mind down. Because yes. you ain't coming home disrupting my peace. Amen. Amen. Can I be playing with y'all for a minute? Uh, I, I, I said, now I'm going to give you a choice. You can let your mind give you some issues, or I'm going to be giving you some issues. Now, you don't want me talking harsh to you and being mean now. So don't come home with your mind racing thinking you're going to destroy my peace and understanding. Amen. Amen. You better slow it down, break it down. Amen. I'm telling the whole church in here, break it down. Amen. And enjoy life. Now, I've laid the foundation for you. And I'm telling all of you to unplug from the wrong thing and plug in to the right thing. Now, in Daniel chapter 12 and the verses 1 through 3, the Bible says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Every one shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to the everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And, there's, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. What Daniel is saying, God showed Daniel the end of days. He showed him the end times. Daniel was someone that unplugged from the world, young in his life. And because he unplugged, even though Nebuchadnezzar brought the children of Israel into captivity, he, because he unplugged and gave himself to the Lord, the Lord protected him and blessed him and caused him to be a great blessing to others, even us today, thousands of years later, because we can read what he wrote. Amen. Church, I want you to unplug from this old world. And while Daniel was down there in captivity in Babylon, around all of the wonders of life, Daniel remained spiritually unplugged. Even to the point, when I say spiritually unplugged, I mean spiritually unplugged from the demonic yeah. stuff that was going on yeah. in Babylon. Yeah. He remained unplugged. Even when Nebuchadnezzar said that when I make this 90 foot golden statue, you bow down and worship it. Daniel and the Hebrew boys, they stayed unplugged. And they said, King, we are not careful. We're not scared to answer you in this matter. We will not bow down. Why could they say that? Because they were unplugged from the world. Amen. And they were plugged into Jesus. They were plugged into the Lord. They were plugged into God. And unless you do that, you're not going to be able to do it. When, when the world's allurements come and present themselves to you, you're going to be sucked into it, run into it like a rat chasing cheese. And your mind just as cloudy and screwed up as it can be. Now, let's take a look before we go any further and, and look at a few pictures here that are on the screen. Now, you see, the world says, these are just, the world says, you know what? Unless you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you, you, you're nothing. But what time tells us is that nothing remains the same. So don't lose your mind trying to chase an image that cannot even sustain itself. Now, the images that I'm showing you it's no disparagement against Arnold or any of the rest of them. It is just to illustrate to you, and especially you young people who are in here, and old too, is that stop spending all your ch time chasing a ghost and a phantom, something that is going to change and diminish over time. Amen. Now, back in the 70s, man, 
Farrah Fawcett was on everybody's wall, men and so forth. Jokers in jail, prison and everything got a pin up of Farrah Fawcett. But you see, time is going to happen. Time, just the natural progression of time. And then if you ask them, same men, would, would you want this Farrah Fawcett now? Oh, no, man, I, no. I want something more younger, more vibrant, more pretty, and more firm and carrying on. Wait a minute, I thought you wanted Farrah. No, I don't want Farrah now. I'm showing you that your mind is deceptive. It's, it's easy to be deceived. Yes. You'll think that you have to have this, but if you'll give it a little time, time will tell you something. Now, young folks, hear me well. Satan is, is, is after you because she was a beautiful person as she was. But Satan got in her head and had her feeling emotionally devoid or deficit. Let me say this to you. Get a handle on your emotional deficit. Yes. Because the stuff that Satan is going to present to you to make you feel whole, it's not going to help you. It's going to kill you. Mm -hmm. Now, that's how she looked as God made her. But when she unplugged and listened to the devil to unplug from God and to start chasing name, fame, and acclaim, Satan continued to introduce more and more destructive measures to the point that it destroyed her. This young man, beautiful smile, but something happened from the time he smiled to the time Satan is working on him. Something happened, y'all. What takes a man from being this happy and jubilant to being someone now that looks like a zombie? You see, Satan convinced him that you're not enough. You're not enough. And he had him on a rat race and a chase. Satan discouraged him. Satan caused him to feel emotionally deficit. Satan caused him to be mentally confused. And then Satan came and offered him what he thought was a remedy. And the remedy turned him into a zombie. Something is happening. Something is happening. Oh, if you can't tell, I'm giving you a workshop this morning. Amen. What is going on in the land that you start off looking like this? Clean cut, nice looking. To go into this, what is going on? What is Satan doing? What is society doing to people? To now, and I, I could have pulled several more images, but I think these images make the point. Mm -hmm. You go from good looking, clean cut to Satan convincing you that you need to look like this in order to matter and fit in in society. Mm -hmm. Satan has people looking like clowns. Mm -hmm. You go from this, young man. Now I'm with a young man. Good looking fella. You never know that that's him. What happened? Satan got this, these people to unplug from God. That's what is happening. And to plug in to what he's saying is in. Only for it to destroy them. You don't even know who the two people are. She was beautiful like she was. Yep. Looking. But now she's a whole different person. Good looking fella. Good looking. But Satan convinced him throughout all of his life that he was ugly. Satan convinced him that you're inadequate the way you are. Satan convinced him that you need to go through all of this 
plastic surgery and change your face, change your body, change everything about you because you, you, the way you are is not good enough. I know I'm down these pews already. I'm down these pews. Get out. And I'm out here in social media world. I'm asking you, which ones look better? Before. Before. The before. If you were to go and ask these people, we can go to the next slide. If you were to go and ask these people, which life would you rather have now? It would be the life of where they began. See, Satan has you believing that you have to chase the stars and the moon in order to be happy. Right. But there's a whole lot that comes with that, church. Amen. That the devil is not going to tell you about yep. until he gets you sucked out there. Amen. Right. That's right. And then you don't have good sense. You don't have your right mind. You are out of your mind. Yeah. You are doing some of everything. And you've literally lost your mind. You've lost your way. Yes. Teaching that. What are you teaching us today coming out of 23? What I'm teaching you in 23 before you go over into 24 is unplug from this nonsense. Yeah. Unplug from it. Yeah. And you don't have to get anybody's permission to unplug. Yeah. Right. Right. You unplug. Detach your brain from this. Because if you don't, I'm telling you, it is going to destroy you. Right. It's going to destroy you. Amen. See, the power of images. Yes. You have a devil out there mm -hmm. yeah. that uses images. Yeah. He uses sound. Mm -hmm. He's a spirit of the air, the Bible says, that comes through your eye gate. Yeah. He comes through your ear gate. And he's afflicting you in ways that you have absolutely no idea. Mm -hmm. Now, I got to say this before I go on. The devil, I'm going to go on. The devil comes along and he afflicts you. He punches you. He knocks you down. He hurts you. He harms you. Now, when he hurts you and he harms you, and you're hurting emotionally, and you don't have the answers that you need emotionally. Satan then comes along with the so-called remedy mm -hmm. that's going to help you. Yes. Let me say to you, this is tried and true. And I could have gone back and pulled, I could have gone back and pulled Mercedes, Benzes, BMWs, everything that Satan tell you that you need to run after. Mm. Now, after just a year, two, three, four, five years, the Mercedes Benz now is somewhere in a junkyard up on blocks with the tires busted or the windows busted out. I can take you to homes and palaces back in history that at one point in time people allowed Satan to convince them that if you don't live in this, you're a barbarian. Well, just let time go by. And then take a look at that. Amen. Yes. It has decayed, yeah. mm -hmm. rotted, molded. And the person who had their, 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 their vanity placed in that, thinking that I'm, a, I'm better than you because I live in all of this. Look at all of the artwork. Look at all of the priceless furnishings in here. Yeah, but you dead now, brother. Yeah. <laughs> And the house that you had so much pride in is decayed and rotten down. I'm going to tell you, Amen. if I don't get through none of these notes, if I get this point over, I've done my job. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. I'm going to tell you to do as I did years ago. That's why no matter what punches and put downs and knockdowns came my way, you can't destroy me. Because I unplugged from this nonsense back in my 20s. Whatever successes I have, I thank God for them, but I don't get too high. Amen. Whatever failures come my way, I deal with them, but I don't let it take me too low. Amen. 
Y'all been seeing and seeing this being exemplified ever since I've been here. Because I've already checked out. Somebody said, do you know what you mean checked out? Does that mean that you that you don't have an interest in things or not? No, no, no. I've checked out from what this world deems as valuable. Right. That's right. And I plugged in to what God wanted for me to do. Amen. I did that a long time ago. So when things are going good, I thank you, Jesus. But Amen. when things are going low, you still see me being Amen. the same old green. Amen. And I'm still smiling. Amen. I can do that when you plug, unplug. You can do that when you unplug. Mm -hmm. But if you stay plugged in thinking that, oh, I was this. I had this. I don't have it anymore. I'm just nothing. Okay. You still plugged in the foolishness. Yep. That's why you can't stand to lose it. That's right. But I'm going to tell you something. You're going to lose everything you have. Right. Go ahead and make your mind up that your health is going to go down one day. Amen. Beauty is fleeting. Amen. I don't have to deal, tell you women what's going to happen to them numbers over time. I've already told you before. Right. Yes. Men, the same thing. You might be walking around like arms, oh, big chest, big arms, big legs, everything. But they they gonna get real mushy one day, <laughs> real thin. I had one 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 old coach come talk to me. He came to me, and he's an older guy now. Won't call his name, but he said, "Feel that right there, <laughs> feel it." So so I took I took my hand and I squeezed it, and it said, <laughs> <laughs> "He said he said it's hard, it's it's hard, ain't it?" I said, I told him, I, I said, yes, sir, you still got it. <laughs> oh, <man. Yeah. laughs> All right, I got to I got to run. You see, let's jump down to verse four in that same reading. In verse four, church and everyone that is listening, I encourage you to do the same. You see, but thou, old Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the end of time, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. God said at the end of the days, knowledge is going to be increased. People are going to be running to and fro. Knowledge has increased. Are we in a day and time now where we know stuff, yeah. able to access knowledge right. at the touch of a button? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> what God showed Daniel, we're in that day of where knowledge has increased. Verse 6 and 7, and one said to the man that was clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, it shall be for a time, times and a half, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Jump down to verse 8 and 10. I'm reading now for big man to catch up with time. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh, oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these uh, things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked is going to continue to do wickedly. Right. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Mm -hmm. Daniel is saying people are going to be running, doing some of everything, running after knowledge, running after this, running after that. And, and he said, and the wicked, the wicked is just going to continue to do wickedness. Right. He says, but the wise. Those that are trusting God, those that have unplugged from the world, plugged into the Lord, those that have gotten their minds and emotional health together and, and gotten a good understanding of this thing, he says they're going to have sense enough to understand what's going on in the world. Yes. We're getting closer and closer to the Lord's return. Yes, sir. And Satan is still having these people running to and fro. Yes. To and fro. But we're getting closer and closer to the end. In 2 Thessalonians, 
chapter 2 and the verse 11 and 12, the book says what? And for this cause, and for God's this cause shall, shall send them strong God delusion. shall send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned. That they all might be damned. Who believe not the truth. Who believe not the truth. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. God said, these people are going to continue to chase after vanity. They're going to continue to chase after all of what Satan is saying makes them something and somebody. He says, now, I'm going to call for them. He says, all day long have I called out to my people, but they are stiff-necked and stubborn and obstinate and won't come to me. All day long I've been calling for my people, but they are getting caught up. They're getting caught up in social media. They're getting caught up in TikTok. They're getting caught up on Facebook. They're getting caught up on Twitter. Yeah. They're getting caught up on Instagram. They're getting caught up on what is supposed to be the style. Looking like clowns. <laughs> Looking like stone clowns. They're going to get caught up in it. He said, now, I'm going to continue to call for them. I'm going to send their parents after them. I'm going to send friends after them. I'm going to send teachers after them. I'm going to send coaches after them. I'm going to send Bible student class teachers after them. I'm going to send the preacher after them. I'm going to send old folks after them. I'm going to send young folks after them. I'm going to send white folks after them. I'm going to send black folks after them. I'm going to send Hispanics after them. But they're not paying anybody no attention. Amen. Mm -hmm. He said, okay. If you don't want to listen, I'm going to send you a strong delusion. Mm -hmm. Church... <clears throat> We don't want God to let us have our own mind. Amen. Because now when he sends us strong delusion, that means he's going to let you believe lie. the lie that you have yes. in your head. Yes. It gets so bad to where young people now are getting to the point to where they say, I don't even believe in God. Yes. 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 I don't believe in God. Amen. Show me God. Amen. God is saying, young people, you better listen to your parents and those that know better. Mm -hmm. Now, what we don't want God to do is give us over to a mind of atheism yes. mm -hmm. that God don't exist. Yes. Yes. You don't want that. And then you start getting into all kinds of things mm -hmm. that's taking you further and further down that track. Yes, sir. I can tell you. No good comes out of it. At all. And I'm going to show you what God's going to do down the line for those that love him. I'm going to show you in Hebrews chapter 12. Now, there's a group of people in here, just like the young folks in here this morning, that they've been taught, they've been trained, and they believe God, but they're having to deal with the issues of Satan trying to get them to disbelieve. Mm -hmm. and, and Satan may even have had a little pull pulling them away from their relationship with God. Let's look at what a loving God does to people like this. In Hebrews chapter 12, and pick it up with the verses 6 through 8, the book says what? For whom the Lord loveth. For whom the Lord loveth. He chasteneth. He gonna whoop them. And scourge of every son whom he received. He gonna put a whooping on every one of them. If he endure chastening. Now he says, you need to man up. Warm it up. When I start whooping your behind, letting you know that I do exist. Read. God dealing with you as with sons. He whooping you because he's dealing with you as he would his son. Stop. Some of us out there, online and in here, things have been running pretty good for you in your mind, foolish mind. But now things are starting to go south. They're starting to head down south. Trouble's here, trouble's there. This breaking down, this happening. What in the world going on? God may be starting his chastisement on you. Yes. He may be starting to whip your behind. Yes. Now, God says you need to pay attention to this whipping. Read on. 
For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? What son is, is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if he be without chastisement. Oh, but if you don't want to take this good whooping with a good mind and, and learn from it. Read. Whereof all the partakers. Now God said, I'm doing this to everybody. It's not, you're not the only one getting the whooping. Amen. I'm Amen. whooping all my children Amen. that I know love me, but are getting pulled out there in the world on various vices. Read. Then are ye bastards and God, not sons? God said, now, if you can't take the whipping, if you're going to let the whipping cause you to get further from me, if you're going to let the whipping cause you to start hating me, if you're going to let the whipping cause you to start going further south, he said, you're not my sons anymore. I'm giving you up. I'm counting you now as a bastard. Somebody that don't want a father to leave them. Amen. You see, when God decides that he's going to start whipping us and stuff starts to get tough for us, and it will, he's going to prove to you that he exists. And it's going to be a whipping baby that can't nobody get off your behind but him. You're going to be wanting him to hurry up. You're going to even eat. Listen, I'm not trying to talk about nobody or nothing because I've been there myself. <laughs> Come repent. Come make a confession before the Lord and everything. You pray. And, and, and God, I'm, I'm going to do right now. Okay, God said that's fine, but you still got to deal with the reaping now. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. You still got to deal Amen. with this reaping. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and, and I have found myself saying, Lord, how long? Yes. <laughs> Amen. We are here. Do I have a witness? Amen. Yes. Lord, when this going to be over? Yes. It seemed like you going it seemed like you're about to go over the cliff. But God loves his people and he's not gonna stop whipping your behind or dealing with the effects of that whooping till he get ready. Amen. Amen. And I can promise you, Amen. I can promise you, it's gonna be in due season. Amen. And when he turned you loose from that whooping, it's gonna be better. You're gonna have sense enough to line up and say, God, I know you exist. Yeah. You're gonna have sense enough when you sit down to eat food. Lord, thank you for these groceries. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, sis. Let, let, let him get through working with you. Now, verse 13, the book says what? But go thou thy way to the end be. Come on. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. He told Daniel, Daniel, you're not going to be alive when the end comes. He says, but matter of fact, you're going to be asleep. You're going to be dead with everybody else. Mm-hmm. But when the end comes, I'm going to raise you up, and I'm going to judge you, and you're going to be able to come on home to glory with me. You see, Satan calls man to unplug from God and to plug into his ways. Church, as we're leaving out of 23, going into 24, unplug from Satan Amen. and plug into God. Amen. I highly recommend it. Amen. You see, been preaching about Satan's deceptive system mm -hmm. of religious division and denominationalism. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. God is calling for the whole world, listen, to unplug from Satan's deceptive system. Right. Satan tried to destroy Christ's church. Mm -hmm. Acts 8 and 9. You go over to the book of Revelation where I preached to y'all through that sermon, through the series. He tried to destroy it, but he couldn't. So Satan got on his horse, mm -hmm. and he went into the church building business. Mm -hmm. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the Bible says Satan will transform himself into an angel of light. That's right. And he will get ministers, mm -hmm. good-hearted folks, who don't know what Satan is doing. And he's going to start building churches. Now, this ain't Greg saying this. I'm, I have read this whole series from the scripture. Amen. That they were going to break away from the church of Christ. Mm -hmm. He told us plainly. Yes. He told us in Romans 16, 16 through 18, and Acts chapter 20, 20, and 28. Right. He told us that they were going to break away from the church of the Bible and start a system of religion. And the first one around 300 AD was the Catholic Church, and then from there, everything else started breaking off from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not Greg saying it. God said it. That's right. So Satan introduced a deceptive system of worship. Mm 
And he said that it's going to be so effective that he's going to deceive the whole world. But God is saying, unplug from that and plug into the original. Amen. Yes. Now, what's so hard about it? You see, we can say, God, I love you. We can say that out of our mouth. God said, I don't want to hear what you're saying. I want to see what you're doing. Because in uh, John 15 and 22, he said, had I not come, you would have had a cloak for your sin. Yes. He said, but now that I've come, there's no cloak now. You can't hide. You can say you love me, but if you don't unplug from this religious system of error and plug in to the only church that you can read in in the scripture, you saying you love me, but your actions are proving that you don't love me. Listen. I got good sense. I got good sense. I'm highly educated. Highly. But I don't let my education turn me into a fool. Amen. I don't do it. And I'm encouraging you not to do it. Did you know why do you say you got good sense? Because I do. I got four or five degrees. I built businesses. I've been in politics. I've been a political leader. I've gone as high as you can go in my career. I acquired a PhD. I've written and published my dissertation. I've published journal articles. I've just finished writing and finna get ready to publish a book and already starting on writing another book and writing the workbook for the book that I have written now. You got to have some good sense intellectually and cognitive to, to do those things. Yes. But I don't pride myself on none of that. What I pride myself on is having enough sense to obey God. Amen. Amen. Some are going to stay plugged into the world. I unplugged some 30 years ago. I'm encouraging you to do the same. You see, church, please understand that Satan has no power unless you give it to him. Amen. Satan, listen, when you go back and read the book of Ezekiel, Satan was created by God. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. God allowed another angel to deal with Satan. Mm -hmm. God didn't even deal with him. He let another created being deal with Satan and he couldn't beat him. Mm -hmm. Satan can only afflict you if you act on what he says. Right. That's it. Right. He can't do nothing to you. His power is derived by men who let him in to them. You remember when Jesus told Satan, the demons, he, they had to beg his permission mm -hmm. on what to do. Yes. He told them, go into the halls then. Mm -hmm. That's the only way they were able to go. Mm -hmm. Now let me show you, let me show you when you stay plugged into the Satan system, I got to help you. Somebody said, well preacher, how does Satan take over folks today? He can't take you over unless you let him in. Amen. That's right. That's right. He enters in, listen well, as I'm getting ready to bring it down. Mm -hmm. He enters in, this is why the Bible tells us to avoid fornication. Mm -hmm. When you commit fornication, mm -hmm. God is not there. Right. You don't have his protection. Mm -hmm. So through the act of fornication, having sex outside of wedlock, the demons have access to possess you right. yeah. through sex. Mm -hmm. This is why the Bible says you have joined yourself to a harlot. Mm -hmm. So when you're having sex, you are unprotected by the Holy Spirit and demons are able to come in and enter you. I got to help you. Amen. How else does Satan have access to possess you? Through substances. Mm -hmm. When you sniff powder, when you inhale vapors, 
and your mind becomes cloudy. You become unsober. This is why the Bible says be sober, be, vi be vigilant, be sober. For your adversary, the devil, is walking as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Who is he going to devour? Those that are not sober. Right. See, we always say, oh, that's talking about the weak, the lame, and this, and that, that. Yeah, lions look to get those that's weak and lame. No doubt about that. But this verse is saying that when Satan is looking to possess someone, He's looking to possess someone who is not sober. Amen. Clear thinking. Yes, sir. The Bible says that we have to be sober, righteous, and godly. Sober, that means right with self. Mm -hmm. Righteous, that means right with your fellow man. Mm -hmm. And godly means you right with God. Amen. So now, when you inhale vapor, when you sniff powder and when you go to that drink and start consuming alcohol, <clears throat> that's why they refer to it as spirits. You are letting your spiritual guards down. And this is why when people start drinking, they start acting a fool. Matter of fact, they turn into a whole different person. Why? Because they are. Demons have entered into that person and possessed them. Yeah. So when you say, oh, this is not my baby. No, it ain't. A demon got him now. Are y'all alive? Yes. 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 Am I preaching to a woke church? Yes. 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 This is what's going on. Yes. So you need to unplug what I'm saying from that stuff. Because if you don't unplug, them demons going to come right on in and possess you. Amen. And you wondering, why can't I be happy? I'm not happy. I'm not happy. No, you're not going to be happy. Satan is not going to make you happy when he's possessed you. Amen. His job isn't to come into you and possess you to make you happy. Amen. Once he possesses you, his job is to destroy you. Yes. And this is why you're walking around crazy. <laughs> this is why you're walking around confused. This is why you're walking around uh, depressed. You got demons in you. Amen. Yeah. I'm trying to help you get them out. Yes. Amen. Stop having sex outside of wedlock. Stop partaking of substances and drugs and, and liquors. And stop allowing Satan to come through your eye gate with looking at stuff that you have absolutely no business. You know what I'm talking about. If you want to perform it, go get a wife, go get a husband, and go at it. Amen. 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 Don't watch the movie. Make the movie. Make your movie. <laughs> In Genesis 3, 1 through 8, Satan calls Adam and Eve to unplug from God. Genesis 10 through 8, and eight, Nimrod unplugged from God and built a city and a tower of, of vanity. In Genesis 18, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah unplugged from God. And God is steadily saying, unplug from the world and plug into me. Last few scriptures and, and it's yours. In Genesis 6 through 12 through 13, Noah unplugged from the world and plugged into God. And God saved him. You see, Job unplugged from the world. In Job 1.22, he said, and when God allowed Satan to afflict him, he said, naked I came into the world, and naked I shall return. He said, the Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The, the only way a man can say that when he's lost everything is he already has unplugged from the world. Amen. Even though Satan took and destroyed everything he had, he was able to endure it because he had already unplugged. In Job 3 and uh, 17, the wicked cease from troubling. Job said, I've unplugged and I'm going to a place where the secret wicked cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. Church, I want you to plug into God in 2024. Amen. Yes. You see it in John 14 and 1. He said, man that is born of a woman is of a, full, full, uh, is of a few days and full of trouble. You're going to have trouble in this world you're living in. Yes. So you need to unplug from it and plug into God. Amen. I'm telling you, this is all right. Amen. John the Baptist 
unplugged from the world. He was out there eating locusts and wild honey. Had on a leather girdle. He had unplugged. <laughs> John the Baptist said, I don't need no half halfalutin meals and steaks and all that. I can go out here and eat these bugs and I'm going to be all right because I got Jesus. You see in verse 7, when he saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he asked them, you snakes, who has warned you to flee from the wrath that's to come? And he said, now when Jesus come back, he's going to have his fork in his hand and he's going to thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat into his garner and burn up the chafe with unquenchable fire. Church, he's telling us to unplug. You see, the Apostle Paul, he unplugged from the world and plugged into God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 18, the book says what? While we look not at the things While which are seen. While we look at the things that are not seen. But at the things which are not seen. But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen For the are things temporal. which are seen, they're temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. But the things which are not seen, I want you to plug in them, they are eternal. Mm -hmm. Everything you see now is temporary. I don't care what's going on. It's temporary. It's going to all go away. Paul said, I want you to plug into that that's unseen. That's not going to be going away. Philippians chapter 3, Paul said, I've unplugged, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, uh, a Hebrew of Hebrew as touching the law of Pharisee. And I'm coming on down. He said, but those things that were counted gain to me, I counted it laws. Yes, doubtless, I count all things but dumb for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Paul unplugged. Yeah. Church, you're going to have to unplug. In our conclusion, is this all right? Amen. Yes. Amen. In Matthew chapter 11 and 28 and 20 uh, through 30, Jesus says, he's still the same, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, come plug in to me, and I'll give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly at heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. <laughs> then and last, in Revelation 22, somewhere around verse 17 or so, he said, the spirit and the bride say, come. Let him that hear it say, come. Let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him come and take the water of life free. Jesus is still saying, come unto me. Amen. Plug into me and unplug from the world. The reality is some are going to do it and some are not. But I'm letting you know, you're going to wish you would have. If you're not a member of the Lord's church, you need to be. By hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and being baptized. You give me your hand and give God your heart and plug in to the church that you can read about. Plug in to the God and Father of all. Plug in to the Lord. Plug in to that one baptism. Plug in to that one faith. Plug in. Plug in to him. Amen. That ain't almost get up close to it, just about it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The book is just right. And I'm praying that y'all will unplug yes. and plug into Jesus while together we stand and sing. Won't you come?